Good day everyone and once again we're back together and your favorite uncle is here again to give you some good content. So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family. And of course, uh, if you uh, have not joined in as a member yet, please, please go in and click that join button for only 20 rands. Actually, our packages start from 20 rands uh, and um, obviously you can benefit from all our value added services. All right. So check them out. So let's get right into the question. We're doing work, energy and power. This is from November 2022. Right. And uh, the question says, a 12 kg block is initially addressed at point A at the bottom of a rough incline plane. The block is pulled up the incline by constant force F acting parallel to the incline. The block reaches point B, which is at a vertical height of 4.5 meters above the horizontal with a speed of 2.25 meters per second. All right, so there it is. So let's try and highlight all the most important things. I think uh, of uh, importance, the fact that they've told us that we are moving from rest. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to include there that at A, the speed is 0 0.25, I mean, 0 meters per second. And then at B, they told us it reaches a speed of 2.25 meters per second. And the fact that they told us that it is... Um, uh, you know, uh, on a rough inclined plane. So it tells us that there's frictional force, right? All right, let's get into the first question. They say define the term non-conservative force, right? Remember that non-conservative forces are forces whose work done depends on the part taken, right? So in this case, an example of that is friction, right? Uh, because uh, friction does depend when you go to the left, friction goes to the right. When you go to the right, it goes to the left and so on and so forth, right? So friction does not have a consistent direction. Uh, the work done by friction does not, uh, is not conserved, right? And in this case, of course, uh, for a conservative force, a very good example is the, uh, you know, gravitational force because regardless of where the motion is, Gravity always acts vertically downwards, right? Okay, so the second question, they say draw a labeled free body diagram on uh, for the block when it is pulled up the inclined plane. Right, now please, ladies and gents, get into the habit of checking what that gravitational, I mean, what uh, the mark allocation is, right? So the mark allocation always gives you a good indication of how many forces there should be. Right, so we're going to have the applied force there. And please note, once they say it's a labeled free body diagram, it means you ought to label the forces in full, right? So write full words, not acronyms. Or if you're writing acronyms, please just uh, label them at the bottom there. So for instance, if you said applied forces FA, then you write there FA applied force, okay? Something like this. And of course, you'll do this for all the other forces. Right. So in this case, there's our normal force. Okay. So we've got the normal force there. Okay. And we've got the friction force, frictional force. Okay. And finally, you've got the gravitational force. Uh, that does not look like it's vertical. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, it looks much better. Okay, so this is going to be the weight of the object, right? So there are the four forces that we have. Remember that normal force, uh, you know, um, makes an angle of 90 degrees with the, um, you know, with the incline right so there's our free body diagram right so the next question they say to us calculate the work uh, the total work done okay uh, on the block by non-conservative forces when the block moves from a to b right now note they've given you a vertical height of 4.5 there and there's no angle that's given for the incline so usually when that is the case ladies and gents I'd say, please do not even waste your time. 
okay we're going to use so that was 5.2 okay so we're going to use the work done by non-conservative forces right this is change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy and we say that the work done by non-conservative forces you must please keep this in mind that when we're talking about this we're only referring to the applied force and the work done by frictional force please remember that right so it's either or right so you can have one of them or both of them right so in this case this is going to be half m vf squared minus vi squared plus mg height final minus height initial right so let's just substitute there uh, our mass is 12 and our velocity final remember it was 2.25 squared minus 0 squared plus 12 times 9.8 times uh, 4.5 minus 0 which will give us 4.5 okay so let's try and calculate that um, in this case we get uh, 0 0.5 times 12 times 2.25 squared uh, plus uh, we said it's 12 times 9.8 uh, multiplied by 4.5 okay we get a f uh, the work done to be 559.58 joules please remember that work done is in joules ladies and gents all right and that is how the cookie crumbles right so let's go on to the last question they say to us the same force constant force f now moves the block at a constant velocity across a rough horizontal surface, right? Uh, from point B to point C as shown below, they say the force F acts parallel uh, to the horizontal surface, right? And they say to us the magnitude of the constant frictional force acting on the block while moving from point B to C is 42 newtons larger than the magnitude of the constant frictional force acting on the block when it moves from point a to b right so now note what they are saying to us they say well we had friction between point a to b let's call that uh you know fk a b right now they're saying to us once we get to this point here the frictional force is the same as a b but only 42 newtons larger so it's actually the friction a b plus 42 newtons right so that's the amount of friction that is there but remember that we are at a constant velocity there so what does it mean remember the moment we say constant velocity we say acceleration is zero and if acceleration is zero, it means that F net, which is equal to MA, if A is zero, then it makes this entire thing become zero. So what does it mean? It means that net force would be equal to zero. But it also means that the net work done is equal to zero because there is no change in kinetic energy, right? Because kinetic energy final is equal to that uh, initial, right? So in this case, what we're simply going to do, uh, ladies and gents, is that we are going to take, uh, now, uh, let's take B to C, right? So in that horizontal motion, remember we had the applied force F and we had frictional force, okay? So frictional force for BC. But remember, we were told that the frictional force between B and C is equal to the frictional force between A and B plus 42. You remember that? But now, remember, because it's moving at a constant speed, it means that F net is equal to zero. And so what does F net constitute of? It's the applied force F minus the frictional force between B and C 
and all of that is equal to zero. But remember, it means that it's the applied force F minus the frictional force between B and C is the frictional force between A and B plus 42, and this is equal to zero. And ultimately, what do we have? F, the applied force, minus the frictional force between A and B is equal to 42, okay? So remember, it was going to be negative when I apply that negative there, but when I take it to the other side, then it becomes positive. So that's our equation one, right? So it means that the, uh, you know, the sum of your forces, this is your net force in this case, uh, you know, for A and B would be equal to 42. But remember, we know that the network done by non-conservative forces would actually be equal to F non-conservative times delta X, the cos of angle theta, right? But we found this to be 559.58, I think, right? But what are our non-conservative forces? Please remember this, ladies and gents. It's the applied force as well as the frictional force. And we already found that the difference between the two, which is uh, the sum of the two forces in a sense, right, is equal to 42. So in this case, it's going to be 42, right, times delta x, the cos of... Now, I want you to note, because we know that the body... Uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the object was accelerating upwards. How do I know it was accelerating? It started from 0 to 2.25. So it means that your net force was actually upwards or the force uh, due to non -con uh, the non-conservative forces. Uh, you know, obviously the winning force was actually upwards. So it means that this will be to the cost of zero. Okay, why? Because direction of motion and the force in question are in the same direction. So therefore, uh, ladies and gents, that would be 42 times cos of zero. That would be 42 delta x, which is 559.58. And we divide both sides by 42. And in this case, delta x. Okay, so... Uh, that would give us, oh, I actually I just erased that, 0.58 uh, divided by 42, and that gives us 13.32 meters. And that is how the cookie crumbles, right? Uh, so in this case, I, I wrote triple five there, whereas it was 559. Sorry about that. All right. So uh, in this case, please note if you have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And of course, you can join in as a member and, you know, just from 20 rand support your uncle. But also what it does is that, uh, you know, it gives you some benefits as well. All right, ladies and gents, I think I want to leave it there. I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.